Hello there, my very good friends. On today's wrestling news, we've got an interesting new report on expiring WWE contracts. Potential spoilers on WWE's plans for Survivor Series. Another promotion wants CM Punk. And a former WWE champion reveals his backstage role with AEW. I'm Adam Wilborn. And I'm Andy Murray. And this is the news. Hardest news show in the game. Let's kick this thing off by uh, talking about a Fightful Select report that goes quite in line with a bunch of theories that we've been spitting mm. on this channel since Endeavor took WWE over. Uh, notably, a change, a little bit of a change in WWE's policy when it comes to entering contract negotiations with stars who are on expiring deals. Mm -hmm. Fightful report uh, that a number of top wrestler contracts in WWE are expiring next year, um, but several talents are yet to be approached when it comes to negotiations. Uh, the outlet notes, interestingly, that WWE has top talent with expiring deals all throughout the year. Some of these are five-year contracts that were signed in 20, 20, uh, 2019. Yeah. Some of them are shorter-term deals that are also set to expire next year. Now, talent are of the belief uh, that since, you know, when WWE were bought by Endeavor, which closed in September, that would maybe kickstart things. Um, but while some people are waiting to see what the offers look like, they haven't been extended yet. Uh, WWE personnel have been speculating on how the buyout will affect things. Will it make the offers bigger? Will they be uh, less valuable? Will they be the same? People are waiting to see. Now, it's been reported in recent months by various outlets that among the top WWE names whose contracts expire in 2024 are Drew McIntyre, mm -hmm. Sheamus, and Becky Lynch. They've all been put out there into the wild. Uh, Dave Meltzer did report the other day that the Drew hasn't signed an extension yet, mm -hmm. but no word on the on any others at the moment. So to me, this sounds, and this is just me theorizing and editorializing and other isings, uh, this sounds a lot like what Endeavor do with the UFC. Francis Ngannou, one of their top stars. Hello, I would like a new contract. Here is a not great offer. Okay, I would like a better offer. Piss off. <laughs> That's basically what they did. And now he's doing gimmick fights yeah. elsewhere. And he was the world um, champion. Yeah, so who's off the table? Uh, Randy Couture, he was just a broadcaster, but the Endeavor came in and went, no sentimentality, piss yeah. off you as well. Telling the baddest man on the planet, yeah. <laughs> TM, <laughs> to piss off is wild. Get out of here. Get out of here, you silly sausages. Uh, so, I don't think there's going to be any sentimentality in these Endeavor negotiations. Nope. I think that they are not... And this is out of the norm, because previously, if a deal was coming up in like a year, WWE would have it locked down way in advance. Yeah. So, it's a, it is a change, and I wouldn't be surprised to see some of these names go. Yeah, I think you're right. You're right. They don't just say, ah, well, you've been with us for ages, and I'm sure we'll find something for you to do, so here's another three yeah. years or whatever. Uh, I have no doubt that they would obviously get work elsewhere if they decided to go. I do think that what Drew McIntyre is doing right now should make WWE think, Oh, yeah, we've got a real star on our hands. I think he's been sensational since the beginnings of this heel turn started. Um, I, I do hope that actually all three names that we mentioned get a, a new contract offer. I think it's a mixture of, like you say, the Endeavor stuff and arguably WWE being less concerned about talent jumping to AEW. We talked in the past, obviously, 2019 being the most obvious, where they were like, no one goes anywhere. I don't care who you are. We'll pay you triple what you're getting paid right now just so you don't go over there. Nowadays, they're less concerned with that. Yeah, I don't think Endeavor give a damn. I yeah. don't think they give a single damn about that. And I think that they will just go, okay, we think you're worth this. Uh, we're not going to pay you more, bye. I think they'll do that to a lot yeah. of people. And I think some of the names are going to shock people. It is a question. Do you think that they will utilize the fact that, that WWE talent now can earn money elsewhere and they're not doing that whole bollocks? We'll take a, a large chunk of that to say, well, we'll offer you that. But hey, if you stay with us, you get the exposure to be able to do your kind of cooking shows or whatever. Maybe some, but I don't think it would be a big enough deal maker no. for the vast majority of people. No. Um, but let's talk about Survivor Series now. And, well, let us know uh, who you'd, uh, or what you think is going to happen with some of these stars yeah. and if you'd like to see them make that leap elsewhere. I'd love to see what Seamus would be like in AEW, yeah, to be I fair. I love Seamus. Seamus is great. Uh, let's talk a little bit about Survivor Series, though. Um, plans, spoilers on some of the plans that WWE have. Um, Less brand warfare. Yay! Yay! T-shirt time is over, brother. Uh, Dave Meltzer reporting it's not going to be Roman Reigns versus Seth Rollins. World champion versus world champion at Survivor Series. Uh, yeah, Meltzer said on Wrestling Observer Radio, they're not going to be doing that, basically. No word on what exactly a Rollins and Reigns could be doing instead, but Meltzer has also previously reported that they won't be doing a Raw versus SmackDown Survivor Series uh, War Games match. Good. Presumably, they will be doing a War Games match. I think 
you and I, if we had to speculate, would probably guess something along the lines of a super group of the Bloodline and the Judgment Day versus all the good guys. But yeah, as much as we've seen what we have seen recently with, with Aldis and, and Pierce obviously being the new GMs of Raw and SmackDown, I was very glad to read that they aren't going to be going, well, it's November, here's your red t-shirt, yeah. here's your blue t-shirt. Yeah. I mean, like, I do think there's still an issue with, with having War Games as just a date on the calendar. Yeah. I think that's whack. It's like when Hell in a Cell and all yeah. those other pay-per-views, it was like, okay, it's time to do one of these matches. That being said, I think that match would be really good, and I think they've built to it pretty well. Yeah, there's, um, it's justified. It's not like it's suddenly gone... Suddenly, uh, yeah. Cody and and Sammy and someone else and are facing pretty deadly and a rat. <laughs> yeah, yeah they, they've not just pulled it out of nowhere, uh, which is good. But yeah, I'm glad like t-shirt time doesn't seem like it's going to be a thing because um, it was the wackest uh, Weird, stuff man. ever. And uh, yeah, I'm happy. No one, no one. I mean, considering the amount of tribalism online, I've never seen anyone said. Raw's better than SmackDown. SmackDown's better than Raw. Let's take this out. Sir. Yeah, we got are you, what are you say? This is a Raw bar, yeah. son. You can't, you can't be wearing just, that blue T-shirt in here. If you're a <laughs> if you're a fed head, you watch all of them, and you don't care whether it's red yeah. or blue, and uh, the draft doesn't really matter anyway. So. Yeah, I just, my favourite always used to be when someone would be drafted like two weeks before and they'd be like, cut me and I'll bleed blue. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. What? Just, what are you talking about? You should be tag team champions with a guy on the red. Yeah. Anyway, it doesn't matter. If you're bleeding blue, you might want to go to the doctor, <laughs> my man. That's that's not normal. Yeah. Um, or you could be just so excited about the Dadly Boys. Oh, <laughs> oh very nice. Our show that goes down November 21st at the Mosaic Tap in Newcastle on Ta upon Tyne. The most beautiful beers in all of the world. Biggest city in the world, apart from Aberdeen. Less than 10 tickets left. Whatculture.com forward slash tickets. Get them now. Adam Wilborn, if you could pick one wrestler for CM Punk to face, uh, ultimate dream match, who is it? Probably, uh, it's a good, good question, Andy. It's probably... Uh... Action Andretti. Okay, well the answer is Tyrus. Um, oh yes, and, I forgot uh, about this story. <laughs> Billy Corgan uh, says CM Punk uh, can come to the NWA and have a. Did he show up in AAA the other day? I, Tyrus. I, I don't know. <laughs> I swear I saw him doing something I like that. I think he's retired. But well, you yeah, never say never. It's a great shame for the gift game if Tyrus is retired because yeah. those last couple of matches. Yep. Oh um, God, I wish I'd I pulled two out. Did you on sat and I'm seeing. Oh hell yeah. Um, NWA chief Billy Corgan's been trying to woo CM Punk a little bit. He was on Mat Men with Andrew Zarian and he was just speaking about CM Punk. I'll just read the quotes, why not? Uh, what I would say to Phil, and I'm not trying to use this as an open forum, uh, I'm saying to you uh, what I would say to Phil, and again, I have not reached out and I certainly know how to get in touch with him. What I could say to him is... <laughs> Who wrote this? Tony Khan. Jesus. Um, he, he would have a lot of fun in the NWA. I think Phil, the person, loves pro wrestling. That man loves pro wrestling. He may not love the pro wrestling business, but he loves pro wrestling. <laughs> Get to the point, Billy! For Christ's sake. <laughs> Listen, yeah. Siamese dream was goaded, but come on. <laughs> um, my only appeal to Punk would be, if you want to have some fun, I can't pay you what you're worth, but if you want to have some fun, come and have some fun in the NWA. We'll kick some ass, we'll have some laughs, and I'll buy you a vegan sandwich. So there you go, Billy Corgan saying, hey, come to the NWA. Um, I mean, look, I would love to sign CM Punk too uh, <laughs> yeah. as, as a wrestling promotion, but... Uh, <laughs> we'll get him on the podcast. Yeah, yeah. The, the, the NWA's been making a few moves recently. They've, they've opened a new territory. They've, they've signed a couple TV deals. Um, but I, I don't see it happening, William. Hey. Hey, I think I think they've got a chance, Andy. I mean, it's the same chance that Five Star Wrestling had of signing CM Punk, but they've got a chance. Yeah. I I'm a bit good about this because I think a few years ago, you know, the proper heydays of NWA power when you had your stocks on there, when you had your LA Knight, Eddie shoes Kingston. of a champion. Like, there's yeah. a bit of me that goes, maybe Punk's tempted by that. I don't think now going into a rage room with EC3 <laughs> is going to quite turn his head so much. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But yeah, I mean, Punk versus Tyrus, they, that's the, that was your chance, Billy. As soon as you took the title off Tyrus. You know what? That would have been so funny. I'm doing an article. Oh. I'm doing an article at the moment and it's it's 10 worst matches of the year according to Cage Match. <laughs> you've, been listening to F, you've been listening to F the Police. On your way to work. I genuinely wasn't listening to that. Why is that come on? Speaking of that, it's the NWA. Oh, that's why. Stop listening to our conversations. 
I hope that came through on the camera. <laughs> chicka, chicka, da, 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 da. Let's move on. But yeah, he's not. He's probably not going to go to the end of He's not wrestling Tyrus's ass anyway. Gee whiz. Uh, right, let's talk about the former WWE champion, Andy, that has been uh, working backstage in AW, and it's one of the greatest champions of all time. One of my favourites. One of Phil Chambers' favourites. Harley Race. Scotty Too Hotty. God rest his soul. Scott Garland. Um, and he's been doing backstage work in AEW, hoping that it will become a permanent role in 2024. He was chatting with uh, rest on Wrestling with Jonas, sorry, I should say. And he says, I'll be going pretty hard with them, hoping to work on a more regular basis. He said, I don't think it's a huge secret. I've been working for AEW as a producer behind the scenes, as a coach and a producer there. And I have the opportunity to do more with them on a regular basis. So it looks like probably at the beginning of the year, I'll be going pretty hard with them. If everything works out the way, I hope it does. I love Scotty Too Hotty. My favourite tag team growing up was Too Cool. I do hope this means just there's a just chance. You talk about Forbidden Door. You talk about dream matches. You talk about Wrestle Dream. One more, Scotty. One more match. Shabata. I know he's been doing an awesome tour. He's been around here actually doing a yeah. tour, so it's not like he's not wrestled, but... Jesus, and if Tony Khan splashed out on the Too Cool music, kill me. <laughs> kill me there, my life has peaked. I'm still a little bit jealous of Phil Chambers that he got to meet Scotty Too Hot and hold a tag team title with him when we were in Mania the other year. You can't trust Damn you! Players, man. You can't trust that man. He's clearly very highly thought of as a backstage guy. He was in uh, WWE for ages doing the role, so hey, Good, I guess. Uh, best best wishes to him. My uh, background on my phone goes incredibly hard right yeah, now. Yeah, there you are. Yeah, so... Uh, yeah. Right, we've got two questions. <laughs> it's a great album, but yeah. it's a classic, but... Maybe I'll be blasting out too loud in the office, what with the bottles being in. Anyway, uh, YouTube community for our questions for the rest of this week. So you know what to do. You're on YouTube already. Go into the community a bit. There's a thread on there with a place where you can put all your questions. Don't indulge in tomfoolery. Join the community. That doesn't rhyme. You could do better than that. The Weekend Hunter 4130 says, Greetings, legends. With KO being traded to SmackDown, how does Cody finish the story against Roman? Personally, I think Cody takes the Money in the Bank briefcase off of Priest and calls his shot for Mania. One of many questions like this yeah. in the thread, Andy. I think he just uh, wins the Rumble, man. Yeah. I think he just wins the Rumble. I, I think it doesn't half cheapen the story. If he wins a briefcase, he couldn't win in the official match. I know he wasn't yeah. in it, but... I also think it undermines Damian Priest a little bit. Like, yeah. Why not just use the briefcase to, to have Damian Priest call his shot, maybe? Yeah. Or have him beat Seth and just cash in. Have him, he's, I mean, yeah. it's a nice piece of booking. It's also going to be out of date in about 10 days. Yeah. Because I think Damian Priest is cashing in at Crown Jewel. When it comes to pro wrestling, man, I'm a keep it simple, stupid kind of guy because I am stupid <laughs> uh, and simple. Uh, and I think that Cody should just... Pr at this stage, it wasn't how I'd originally book it, but at this stage, Cody should win the Rumble and he, 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 Priest should keep the briefcase. From one. From one. Yeah. Have him at one, have Gunther at 30. Nice sort of Symmetry. reversal of what we had. Yeah. And uh, Gunther with him being the last person eliminated again in my booking. He goes after the World Heavyweight Championship at WrestleMania because mm. that would be awesome no matter who was champion. Mm. Let's do it. Uh, Z Mashup 8069 nice. uh, says, Good morning, legends. Besides Rhea Ripley, who else is getting a big hometown pop at Elimination Chamber? My bet is on Big Bronson Reed winning the Intercontinental Championship maybe in a chamber match. <laughs> Jesus, Fenton. <laughs> um, yes. Bronson Reed, they'll put him in a nice spot. Last time they were in Australia, they did uh, Buddy winning the Cruiserweight yeah. belt. And uh, what did they do with the Iconics on that show? I, I think they defended the tag titles. Yeah, yeah, I think they did with like shenanigans, maybe. Yeah. I mean, if they're able to appear, I know uh, Jessie's pregnant, isn't she? Yes. Um, and and Peyton's obviously... She's working. She's yeah, she's back. low blow by she's Matt back. Cardona on the indies. Cassie Lee, that's her. Yes, I always forget for some reason. Like and they're all, they'll always be Billy Kay and Peyton Bloody Royston. Exactly. If they can get them on screen just to do something, that'd be home. nice. Bring them home. Like they don't need to win a, a title or anything, but like just put them on. TV. What if you got Peyton wrestling and Billy on commentary? And oh my I'd, goodness. I'd, Immolate. There you go. Moment. <laughs> Who else have we got? This Australian. Grayson right? Bloody Wall is going to get something Waller, nice. Course, yeah. Even though he's a heel, it's going to be Bizarro World. Yeah, they should kick the crap out of him. Uh, <laughs> he's, a, he's a heel, he's a piece of trash. Like, and uh, we've said before, Toadfish wins uh, yeah. the US <laughs> yeah, title yeah. or something. Yeah, Dr. Carl, get him involved. 
<laughs> I paid for a cameo from Dr. Carl Kennedy to introduce the bloody good quiz once. <laughs> it was a, it was a, I was a, I was in a bit of a weird place with the pandemic, and I thought, you know what, I'm gonna treat myself. <laughs> How much? Not that much. Twenty quid. Thirty dollars, okay. maybe or something. Sweet. Check him out on cameo. Yeah. Good, good value. I yeah. mean, he, he didn't stray much from the script. I gotta be honest. <laughs> thought I might get a bit of like, you know, bit of Kennedy is a bit of neighbours, but no. You want me to say it? I'll say it. That's classic Carl. <laughs> Sorry, Ryan. He's effing and jeffing all over the place. <laughs> all right, one each, that's fair. <laughs> yeah. uh, final question, and and obviously the one from the NWA, but we didn't say that one. Uh, Michael Vasquez. Interesting question. I'm sure people are actually intrigued by this. How did you come up with the new logo? Uh, it just looks nice, doesn't it? It does look awesome. Yeah. I love it. So the originally, like, I've... Full disclosure, and my bosses won't mind me being open about this, I don't think. I hated the grey logo. Yeah, it's boring as I, sin. Yeah, like I hate, for me, like the point of a logo is it should catch your attention. Mm -hmm. When you go past it, scrolling, as we all do these days. Purple and gold, baby. Um, it wasn't me who came up with the colour scheme, it was Phil and Nicholas through the house, the gods. Mm -hmm. Put it together. They actually put a bunch of different ones together. It's amazing how how much variation you can have on a square and a bit of a thing inside yeah. the square. But. It's crazy. And uh, the team, they they kind of assembled a, a bunch of different options. The team all liked this one more than the other ones. Originally, we were going to go with some red, like black and white, like we've done before. Yeah. Classic colors of the channel and all of that stuff. But we just wanted to go for something different. Also, it's the first WrestleMania, it's King of the Ring, it's other classics like Man on a Mission. I was going to uh, say, yeah. Uh, uh, Scott Hall had some iconic purple looks, like the Judgment Day. Like, there's purples everywhere, man. Grimace. <laughs> I liked it when we teased it with a picture of Prince. Yeah. And people went, huh? <laughs> it's raining. Yeah. Oh, probably. It's raining almost permanently now for the next six months here in Gateshead. I love living in England, man. It's yeah. great. But if you want a bit of sunshine in your life, Andy, you know what you need to do? What's that? Click on this video. Peace. See ya.